JRPG music is full of variety. From acid jazz, dance, and heavy rock tracks, there's good music of all kinds to find in a lot of games, and 2018 has been no exception. In the games I played this year, I found myself enjoying the electronic tracks of many composers, and I've also found enjoyment in the more traditional orchestral soundtracks that sound amazing with music production quality always increasing. With lots of great JRPGs out this year so far, I can say most of them have had great soundtracks too. So these are 8 musical highlights from JRPGs I played this year. Masafumi Takada is one of my favorite composers thanks to his work from Danganronpa, and his use of a variety of sounds and effects really goes well with the electronic nature of the Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth series. The extra tracks he did for Hacker's Memories such as Cyber Duel really captured the nature of Hoodie and everything you added to the game, both fitting in well with the previous tracks while also giving the familiar looking environment a much needed fresh element. Cyberdoor reminds me a lot of one of my favorite tracks he did for Dungarompa V3 called Debate Scrum, with its driving electronic sound that Takeda does so well. And having a different take on that kind of track in the form of Cyberdoor was a great backdrop to my new favorite game mechanic in Hacker's Memory and its domination battles, and really fit the mood well. Sword Art Online's anime has always had great music and themes, and the lively rock opening track for Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet really helped it shine before the game was released since it put itself in my head quickly, making the game hard to forget. While the song isn't really used in the rest of Fatal Bullet, its driving rock guitars and passionate vocal by singer Lisa make it set a good first impression. I listened to this track a bunch when I first got Fatal Bullet, and it always got me pumped to go home and play it, and I can't help but think of the song and get a little excited when I see clips from the opening video because of how well it packs a punch as an opening theme. It's hard not to throw the entire soundtrack at Ease 8 into this list as I really liked its overall unique sound that balanced gentle tracks and crazy rock tunes surprisingly well. But the opening theme of Ease 8, Lacrimosa of Donna, really set the mysterious story tone well with its pretty melody that always leaves something lingering. When seeing the opening movie using this track, it's easy to feel the emotion and tension laid by the carefully placed string sections, and the way the track builds and manages to open Ease 8 softly while also giving a hint at bigger things to come really makes it feel special. This track also did something I love in certain games, where as I was running through one of the later dungeons, this track played in the background and really made the emotions feel heightened at the right point. I love when games put sad themes in during exploration portions at the appropriate time, and with such a gorgeous theme, this track did its job of setting the soft, sad tone very well. <laughs> Persona 3 Dancing in Moonline isn't out in the West yet, but its music is something to get really excited for. Persona games have always had great soundtracks, but this remix of Burn My Dread really reminded me how great the original song was while also putting a dance spin on it, with plenty of electronics and distorted vocals added in, giving it a very modern feel. Burn My Dread was and still is a great rock track in its original form, but I can't help but tap my foot to the beat of this remix, which is perfect for a dance game, and the way this version takes advantage of the rising vocal line to create a big chorus makes this an unforgettable track from the ones used in Dancing in Moonlight, and I'll be listening to it and burning it into my memory as much as possible when they hopefully release a soundtrack for the new Persona Dance games. <laughs> The 
Wild Ends With You is effortlessly cool, and so is its track, Twister. A quick rock track with plenty of other genre influences in it, with its acoustic and electric guitars mixed in with electronic sounds and horns. I actually prefer the original track to the remix version made for Final Remix, but luckily both are featured in the Switch port, so I can enjoy both, and I loved when either popped up in battle, but I prefer the original version since it keeps things that little bit more simple, and I think it sums up the game style very well. With interesting harmonies and a fitting cool vibe, this song and the many other great ones in the world ends with you will probably force me to buy its original soundtrack so I can listen to them when I'm not playing, and Twister is worth a listen if you want to get an idea of the cool music from the game. I'm somewhat concerned about putting this track in here since all the vocal versions of it have been ripped off the face of YouTube, but I love it so much every time I play Dragalia Lost and it hit its home screen that it felt wrong not to mention it. I find it adorable how its characters walk to the rhythm of this happy track as it loops, and I found myself accidentally buffing my head to its pop beat in public on multiple occasions. Dragalia Lost is getting me into its artist Dalco in general, and most of the tracks she provided for the game fit it really nicely, as well as being great standalone tracks. So I hope this song gets an album feature or single release so I can listen to it both in and out of the game. A small spoiler warning, the next two tracks are from Final Boss Battles, so please proceed at your own risk and feel free to skip ahead around 15 seconds after the titles if you want to listen to what I have to say and not have the track spoiled. As a boss battle theme, Octopath Traveler's track Battle at Journey's End really set the tone for me after witnessing the climax of each character's journey. It's just the right amount of pumping for these genuinely hard boss battles, with well-used percussion and its horn section up front that really shines in this track. It's the perfect cherry on top of a fantastic soundtrack that fits its eight characters well, and the fact that this one track sits well at the final boss battle of all of its characters shows how good of a track it is and makes everything feel cohesive at the end of each journey. Atelier Lydian Soul's soundtrack is overall very light, with a mix of soft, humorous, and relaxing music, but its boss battles always knew how to crank things up, and its final one, Filling the Shade, did that in its own unique way. The operatic rendition of a melody featured in other tracks in the soundtrack, such as Disorder and Order, tied this final battle track into the rest of the soundtrack well, and the dissonant harmonies and tribal feel that seems to feature in many Gust soundtracks is always something I enjoy from their games. The way this melody, shown at various moments in the game was played in this boss battle with all the interesting harmonies and its big chorus all came together to create an intricate boss battle track that suits its tricky boss, and the uniqueness of it really makes it one of my favorites from Lady and Soul's soundtrack. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what your favorite tracks have been from JRPGs this year, and who are some of your favorite video game composers. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, or check out the blog at jrpgjungle.com where I do everything I do here, but in written form. And you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at jrpgjungle. Links to those will be in the description below, along with links to where you can pick up the games and soundtracks that I mentioned. Until next time, thank you, bye!